Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, Sam, break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, the SEC filing shows that BlackRock, with its 9 trillion assets under management, held Bitcoin futures contracts worth a measly 6.15 million. That's not the big story. The big story is what uh, executives are saying about gold over there in BlackRock and how it can potentially affect cryptocurrency and digital assets. So we'll take a look at that on top of I'm going to talk to you today about why I believe that April is not going to be a stellar month for crypto and how May and potentially June is going to be the breakout month and why I think that is. And finally, we'll follow it up with talking about what the heck is going on with Voyager and its price as it crashes to the ground. So we'll take a look at those three stories. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, April 3rd. Uh, 2021. It is uh, high noon uh, here in Puerto Rico. Still here, probably be here until Monday as we close up some dealings and businesses and such. And a uh, pretty great place, I got to tell you. So far, so good. And let's take a look at the market and see what we got. So Bitcoin is uh, up 7% for seven days. Pretty good. Uh, it slipped below the 61,000 mark. Now we're at 59,000. So a little bit of consolidation. So if you're new to the uh, market, just know that that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, a little bit up, a little bit down, sometimes three steps forward, one step back, sometimes 20 steps forward and two steps back. And sometimes <laughs> it's just the exact opposite. But that is cryptocurrency and that is what we have. Uh, Ethereum up 22% for a seven day and 1% for 24 hours. So congratulations to all you Ethereum holders. Looks like it's a pretty good day for you. And we actually talked about this yesterday about how I talked about how uh, Ethereum is actually making good things. Actually, it was uh, really what it comes down to. It's a second layer solution, which is really do doing well for Ethereum. And, uh, and the market responded. So we'll see if this can actually uh, keep up. So congratulations. Binance Coin up 34% for seven days. Again, Binance Coin doing great things as a taking, really taking away market share from Ethereum as people are starting to uh, trade over there, not start, they've been doing this for quite some time for their decentralized exchange on the Binance Smart Chain. And uh, we'll see if that continues. DOT is uh, pumping massively 31% in seven days. USDT, no one cares. Cardano, eh, down 0.5% as nothing's really going on. And I think that's going to be pretty stagnant for a while. Uh, the Mary Hard Fork already happened, Gogan Smart Contracts, and they're saying within uh, six months, you're going to be able to do uh, basic smart contracts uh, for uh, basic languages and for programmers. So, I mean, nothing really is going to go on for a Cardano for quite some time. Um, I think it'll just be flat, a little bit high, but again, it's been a great year so far. XRP up, you know, so, I mean, everything's up. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. And uh, I think this is looking pretty good. Let's take a look at what we have done in a while. And if you notice that uh, I switched back to CoinGecko for, for this uh, episode, usually we use Trade the Chain, but I wanted to go over some things and just take a look at what would happen if you would have uh, just bet, uh, bet on Bitcoin and traded in Bitcoin. Well, on CoinGecko, you can do this. You can, you can change it all over and see what it would be if you just did it in Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin would be zero, right? But if you were to trade in Ethereum, you'd be up 13.5% over seven days. If you were on Binance Coin, 24%, DOT, 22%, XRP, 1.7%, Litecoin, nah, 23% for Filecoin, I think great. Wow, Tron, 53%. You would have been up 53% if you would have gone against uh, Bitcoin. 33% for EOS, crazy. <laughs> what? Uh, Solana, 33.2%. I mean, just the list going on. 92% for BitTorrent. Congratulations, BitTorrent holders. My friend George is ecstatic today. <laughs> They're crushing it. 20% OKB, 118% for, for a holo chain. Man, that's pretty good. Now let's take a look if we were just going to uh, get into Ethereum. So Ethereum is very hot, right? Uh, doing pretty well. Well, if you would have gone to Binance coin in the last seven days, 10%. Dots, 8%. You would have missed out on a lot of other places. Filecoin, not one of them, 8.5%. Tron, 35%. 17%. If you would have gone against Ethereum, you could have made a killing on EOS. But who who to, who to thunk it, as we say? 69% for BitTorrent and so on and so forth. So again, when we take a look at the markets, just know that there's a lot of opportunities out there and it really depends on what your goals are. Are you a uh, long-term investor? That's pretty much what I do. I just kind of like buy and hold. Are you one of those uh, day traders who likes to get in and out? Or are you like a, uh, you know, a long-term trader? Maybe you, you trade for a little bit, hold for a while, and then let go. Again, everybody's situation is different. So this channel is not financial advice, entertainment purposes only. So uh, whatever your 
whatever your goals are, are, are your goals. I can't wait to tell you what to do. And that's pretty much about it. But that's what's going on in the market. Let's jump into today's top story. And this is, it's, it's great to know that a huge uh, institution such as BlackRock is, first of all, they talked about Bitcoin. Then it's been revealed by the SEC fund that, yes, they actually do hold a little bit of Bitcoin as far as like a futures contract, which isn't really that much. It's not like it's a physical, uh, they're holding Bitcoin, just a futures contract. But it just signals to what it really does for this story to me is it's like everybody who's in traditional finance or who's into stocks and who's into bonds. And you have to understand that I know you think that everybody's into crypto, but guess what? You're dead wrong. Not everybody is like you. Not everybody's like me. It's one of my fatal flaws, and I always talk about this. I think everybody wants to get into crypto. Uh, we were talking to our real estate agent and a uh, smart lady, and I was just trying to explain to her about, about cryptocurrency, and it was like talking to a toddler uh, because th that's just, people just don't understand. They're like, well, yeah, that sounds like, like, like a pretty good stock. I'm like, it's not a stock. Okay, well, I'll just talk, call my broker. I'm like, you don't have to call a broker. You can just, you can just buy it. Yeah, well, it sounds pretty good because the interest rate. I'm like, there's no interest rates. It's, you just buy it. And then you just hold it or you want to trade it, whatever you want to do. So I know, like, again, like you think that I have the same problem. You know, you think that this is the world. We are so early. You have no idea how early we are. Go down the street and ask somebody about Bitcoin. Might know it. Ask somebody about Ethereum. Ask somebody about Binance. Ask somebody about Tomato Coin. Well, I mean, no one's going to know those things. They, they're just not. Uh, and that's just pretty much how it is. So when I see these types of stories, this is just to me like, like, a sales pitch because people have to see things seven, 10, 15 times before they actually get it. So when you're in traditional finance and you see these, these gods up on Mount Olympus, as you want to call them, I mean, BlackRock is kind of like the pinnacle of the you know financial institutions with their nine trillion asset under management. When you see they're dabbling in it, you're like, maybe I should get into that. And that just kind of moves the goalpost. And it's just a game of inches, just like football. So this is, I think, a pretty good story. And what is going on essentially is that this is that bring it up here. So on March 31st, uh, through its global allocation fund, it held 37 Bitcoin futures contracts with 6.15 million. And this was actually in an SEC filing. Uh, again, on uh, March 26th. And it had already appreciated in value by some 360,000. Uh, but just so you know, these holdings, 37 contracts in total, were about 0.03% of the firm's global allocation fund. So not that much. And that's just how it is. But when you're a publicly traded company, then, of course, you're going to have to, you know, file with the SEC. And uh, that's... It's just how we actually know what's going on. So they're dabbling into it. It signals to other people that, hey, this is, you know, a legitimate type of thing. You should probably get into it. Again, not everybody's like you, not everybody's like me. They don't just get it yet. So they need these types of cues, these types of signals from other traditional players to go, okay, this makes sense. So that's the story in its really entirety. The rest of it's kind of boring. I mean, that's just how it is. But the thing that I that caught my eye was this last piece where it says BlackRock exec, executive Russ Kostrich says gold's ability to hedge against inflation has been somewhat exaggerated. Again, you have to take a look at the clues as to all the different gold bugs, all the different traditional people who are like, hmm, if BlackRock's doing that and that's really smart money, maybe I should listen up. The writer stressed that people are looking for storehouses of value. So if you're into gold, you're really hedging your bet, just like a Jim Cramer always talked about, who is now on the Bitcoin bandwagon. So if you're doing this, you're like, hmm, maybe I should really start to hedge even more because maybe I could have gold, maybe I could have Bitcoin, which totally makes sense to me. I don't know why these uh, crazy gold bugs don't uh, give their followers the right information, but they just don't because they're greedy and uh, I don't want to go into it. But um, I will just say this. If we could capture a small percentage of gold's actual market cap. So this is the thing I always like to talk about, uh, just the market caps by different assets and, and people and uh, industries. So like, if you take a look at gold, gold is $11 trillion, probably around $12 trillion right now, uh, the total market cap of gold. Right now, Bitcoin is like 1.1 trillion. The entire cryptocurrency market is only 2 trillion. So if you think that, uh, what I think would be prudent for these investors is to say, hey, 
maybe instead of going so much into gold, go into something like a Bitcoin and really hedge your bet. Imagine if we hit 50%. Well, that would be $6 trillion in Bitcoin. So that's a 5X right there. So if you're looking at 5X, you're looking at a $300,000 Bitcoin. Because right now we're around 60,000, 5X of that. Let me do some quick math. So about 300,000. Pretty good day uh, for the cryptocurrency market. Could that happen? I think it could absolutely happen. And that's just gold. And we're not talking about stock markets, money, not money supply, global debts, global real estate. I think that's the next big one. When they start to tokenize, and they've already done it, and it talks to bringing some information about tokenizing real estate on the blockchain, which is different than than an REID, uh, real estate investment, uh, uh, these different types of things where they actually take uh, you know parts of, uh, of the real estate and you can you can purchase it. I'm talking about tokenizing real estate. Imagine that tokenizing real estate is a 280 trillion dollar industry. If you can do something like that and put it in a cryptocurrency in the digital asset market, it would just blow up. So I think that this is uh, one of our hallmark years. I think it's gonna be great. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. I'm gonna talk to you about when that's all gonna happen. So I had to pull some, some quick data because I we all know that you know there's the, the four year cycle. We talk about it all the time, right? And now we're in the all time high uh, years. If you haven't heard of my four year cycles, go watch any video I've done in like the last six months. I'll talk about it all the time. So like with this one here, I, I just pulled Bitcoin's chart, and I want to take a look at that particular all-time high year. And you can see, like, in 2017, let's see, uh, sorry, 2013, uh, going back in time, when we take a look at the, the end of April, Bitcoin was like 135 bucks. Wouldn't that be fantastic? But then, because it doesn't go beyond that, and uh, it kind of dipped down a little bit. Now in May, we have 111. 112, 113, and it just kind of went sideways for a little bit. 128, sideways, sideways, a little bit of a dip here until July, sideways, sideways. August, it kind of rebounded, and all of a sudden it was just off the races. That's a pretty good, pretty decent look, but I think this one's more telling. This is when we take a look at uh, 2017. So if we're taking a look here at 2017, let me fast forward here. This is January, February, March. Let me blow this up so you can see. So here, if we're taking a look at 2016, moving forward, November, December, January, February, March. Take a look at the price of Bitcoin in March. So not too bad. People always say like March isn't a great year for cryptocurrency. It's not awful. Look, you have about a, almost $1,200 in March. $1,191, $1,258, dollars So a bit of a dip, $1,036. A little bit, and just sideways action, right? 11:40 up until April. So now in April, people are talking about, "Oh, this is going to be great." I don't think April's that great of a month. Look, you have 11:40, 11:89, 11:32, 1200, 11:83, back down to the 14th, and the 15th it kind of just becomes stagnant. But what's going on around April 15th? That's when taxes are due. And in the United States, I don't know where you're at, but that's a you know that's a lot of money being sloshed around, and people need to pay their taxes. And around April 15th, the only place that's really liquid 24-7, 365, as you guessed it, the cryptocurrency market. So at the, around this time, people start to liquidate things because they need to pay for their taxes. Then after that, it's off to the races. 1321, 1349, 1400, 1500. This is in May now, mind you. Then we're gonna keep going up, 1700, $2,000 in May, and up we go. And then, of course, 2700 we kind of drop back down. And I think I see the same type of thing going on in our market right now. So you have to remember, though, one thing, and that is this. When we're talking about uh, taxes, this could probably happen again. The thing is, nowadays, or not nowadays, just for this particular year, the IRS in America has pushed us back from April 15th to May 15th. So I believe people have a little bit more time to save up for their taxes but they're still gonna liquefy and they're still gonna sell their cryptocurrency. So I believe towards the end of May and June, we're gonna see uh, a pretty stellar uh, month, but that will only happen after that time frame, after people sell for their taxes. Also, I wanna have you take a look at this, and this is what we're talking about as far as, uh, that's just Bitcoin. Let's take a look at Ethereum. 
the same type of thing, right? Because we, we can't just take a look at Bitcoin. We got to take a look at alts. How about one of the king of the alts? Which, if we take a look at this, we're looking at here's 2017. So again, in March, wow, look at that, nineteen dollars for an Ethereum, twenty-three, twenty-eight, thirty-four. So actually, Ethereum did pretty good uh, in March 2017. Forty-four, forty-one, fifty, fifty-two, and then it, it ended up at fifty. It actually doubled in price in March. So when people say that March is on a good good month, it's not too bad for alts. And then so let's take a look at April. 48, 45, 44. So it drops down again because what are people doing? They're selling for their taxes. 47, 48. And then what happens here after the taxes? Now it starts to do this 50 bucks, $77, 89, 96. And then up it goes and up it goes. So when you have any type of, if you're taking a look at like what could potentially happen, look at tax season. Look what's going to happen. Now again, April 15th, it's going to, for Americans, it get, it's, it's gotten pushed forward to May 15th. So I think uh, towards right after May, end of May, early June, that's when we're going to see a little bit more fireworks about what's going to happen on with crypto and digital assets. So let me know what you think uh, in the comments section. Let's move on to one of our last pieces. Oh, before I forget, if you're, if you're looking for help with your taxes, CryptoTrader.tax. There is a link in the description. Dan uh, viewers get 20% off. Also, there's a link underneath that uh, that uh, discount where you can put in your first name and email and enter to win for an unlimited tax report, which is $300 value. So whatever you want to do, if you want to try to win the big prize, which they draw every single week, or just sign up and get your taxes done. Super simple. Took me 30 minutes. Sent over my CPA. Bing. Done. And that's it. All right. And last up, wouldn't be a story if we didn't talk about a little Voyager. So, Voyager, what the heck is going on here? Well, let's be honest. Voyager isn't doing so hot right now, right? So, Voyager, in, in its entirety, it, right now, we're looking at huh, not too great of, of a price tag. Let's take a look here. Let's put it in US dollars. There we go. It's a little better. So four dollars and five cents. What's happened over the last, ooh, let's say, hour, twenty-four hours, seven days? Not too great, right? And we've uh, let's take a look at the seven day. Still going down. So we were at five twenty-five. Now we're at four bucks. Actually, we're at three ninety. Pretty awful, right? Let's take a look at the last two weeks. Nah, went up a little bit, but still went down. So it's been a pretty tumultuous time frame. And what's going on here? Well, if you don't know, there is going to be a token swap for LGO, uh, which was the merger that they had for the institution for the uh, exchange over there in France, which they are uh, merging with. The LG to LGO token and Voyager token is going to be a token swap towards the end of April, around May 1st or so. So until that time, and I've, I've said this, this has been my third time talking about it. I said it's either going to decrease the the, uh, the actual price for the Voyager token or just going to trade sideways. So we're, we went down a little bit. That's awful. Isn't it awful? No, it's not awful. I'll tell you why. So first of all, I want you to back up. My friend Diddy says, when in doubt, zoom out. Let's take a look at the 30 day for Voyager. So not too bad, right? Still a little bit down, up and down. Let's take a look at 90 days. All right. Well, we started down here at around... 14 cents, and then we went all the way up to almost, seven, well, it was $7 at some point, 7.09. Take a look at 180 days. And this is pretty much flat at 12 cents. This is just six months. Imagine this. I was talking about this on the channel, January 7th, on my price prediction, when it was 29 cents. And then people were all ecstatic about it. And now people are coming at me like, what's up with your, with your pick? What's up with Voyager? It only went up, I don't know, 1,000% or something like that. And uh, well, it wasn't that much percent of it, like 30, 10, only went up 20x, 25x. How dare you? And now it's down to four bucks. Hey, it, it is what it is. Uh, again, not financial advice. I told you when it was a 29 cents, and if you would have gone there, it would have been great. If you would have got a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, sure. And right now, some people picked it up at five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars, and they're upset because they didn't hit that, that time frame. So here's the thing. You, can, you got two options, right? If it was me, I can't give you financial advice, but, but you really got two options. You can complain about it and you can say, you know what? I'm just going to uh, just sell it at a loss. 
Okay, but I will tell you this, I'm not in the business of losing money. Me personally, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna hold on because I know that that token swap is coming up. I know that that loyalty pro program is happening. I know that there's a debit card coming. There is a credit card company. There is direct swaps between stocks and cryptocurrency right on the platform. I know that there's a 7% uh, staking uh, interest rate that I can get just for staking uh, Voyager. And right now, and this is what I talked about in, the, in the, my tweet. I said, look, if you're upset because of this price, maybe you went in a little bit too heavy. Maybe I don't recommend that to anybody. To me, well, I, again, me personally, I just dollar cost average. I'm not gonna take $150,000 and dump it on Voyager last week and go, you know what, I think it's gonna go up uh, 10X. That is ridiculous. That's why I'm always talking about dollar cost averaging. If you just were to say, you know what? Hey, look, I've got $10,000, 500 bucks, $100, 25 cents. I don't know what you've got. And you're like, I'm just going to put this in a little bit, a little bit. Then it usually evens itself out. This, this, this whole market is, is super tumultuous. It is very volatile. So don't put everything in all at once. I'm not recommending that. I'm not going to do that for myself, but you can do whatever you want to. So I said in this, in this tweet, I go, look, if you are a believer in what's going to happen with Voyager, if you think it's got a great team, you think things are, are going on pretty well, if you, and also they're going through growing pains, there's no question about that. I even put a customer support ticket on uh, three days ago, still hasn't gotten answered. It's just growing pains because everything is growing so fast. But if you don't believe in it, then maybe you should get out. But if you think like, you know what, this is a great opportunity dollar cost average because it was at $7. Has anything changed? Has there been a huge hack? Has the CEO stepped down? Has the whole team just said, you know what, we're done with this place? Has there been a lawsuit by the SEC or something like that? Sorry, XRP is what it is. No, so the fundamentals haven't changed. So if you're looking at like now, right now going, hmm, it's four bucks and it was seven bucks. Now that loyalty program is gonna come out. It's up to you to do your own research. And if you wanna go down this route, then you can. But if you don't, then it's time to get out. And uh, that, I say is up to you. All right, so that is it for today. So first of all, thanks so much for uh, sticking with me. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing a lot of things that we do talk about are time sensitive. That's all for today. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.